Welcome to Open Your Reality. Do we truly possess free will or is our world completely dictated by a deterministic universe? This is the great question philosophers have been wrestling with down through the centuries. Many would like to believe that we are all making free will decisions in every part of our lives. But from a larger perspective, if time is just an illusion, which Einstein proved is true, then everything that can happen has already occurred. Seen in this light, there is nothing we can really do to change the course of the future. In effect, the efforts which we make to escape from our destiny only serve to lead us into it. Many of you believe that our world is just this, a deterministic one that is playing out, much like a record plays on a turntable. However, others of you believe we are co-creators of this universe, able to make free will decisions at every moment, and the future is just a blank slate. But which philosophy is correct? This is the very question I posed to New York Times best-selling author Neil Donald Walsh when I had him on my show in early September of 2022. The answer may surprise you. Without further delay, here's Neil's response. The answer is both. Uh, we have free will and everything is predetermined. And if I could use uh, a metaphor that I was given in my conversations with God, because that's the answer I was given, by the way, in CWG. Neil, the answer is both. You have free will and everything is predetermined. And my mind went, okay, help me out with that. How can that, how can both be true? They seem to be mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. And God said to me, okay, uh, have you ever heard of a chess game on computer? You ever, ever played computer chess? And I said, yes, I have. God said, you do understand, Neil, that the game has completely been played. That is every move that could possibly occur has already been programmed onto the disk. You can't make a move that's going to surprise the computer. The game has been played a hundred thousand times. I just threw out a number there, but obviously chess masters have played the game, you know, from every position on the playing board in every possible situation. So you can sit there in front of your computer. That doesn't mean you do not have free choice. You can play the predetermined game any way you wish. You can choose to move this piece or that piece or this piece or that piece at this point in the game and make whatever choice you want to make. But you'll simply be reenacting one of the moves that has already been made. So the answer is you have free choice with regard to how you wish to experience in this particular moment of this particular lifetime, how you wish to experience that which has already occurred in the overall timeline. But that's my understanding. And those predetermined paths, Chad, Chad, include every possible path. That is, every possible outcome in every possible situation has already occurred, just as is true on the computer chess game. You can't, you can't move, move in the game in a way that would surprise the computer. The computer will never respond to you by saying, never saw that move before. Sorry, try again. That would not happen because the entire game has been played a million times. So as you can see, Neil Donna Walsh believes that in essence we have free will, but we can only choose from a finite number of decisions. This is somewhat in contrast to the philosophy of someone like Tom Campbell, who believes that we all have free will and can choose whatever decision we want within our given decision space. It is important to define free will as being that, meaning choosing what we wish to do within our decision space. For example, a person in jail will still have free will, but their decision space will be a lot smaller than a person who is not in jail. It is also important to note that having free will does not mean you can be whatever you want. As much as you may want to be the starting quarterback on a professional football team, if you don't have the size and talent, it's not going to happen. So we can see free will does not mean you have the power to do whatever you want. It is the ability to make a decision from within your given decision space. Tom believes that life would be pointless if the universe were deterministic and all of our choices were unconsciously being made for us by a greater power. Of course, we believe that we are the ones making all the decisions, as Tom says. However, there is another theory which states that nobody actually ever makes a free will choice. And that is because, in fact, there is no self to make the choice. 
It is a complicated philosophy, but at heart, nobody is in control of their lives because the ego is not real. This philosophy says that all the decisions we make are dictated by our biology and chemistry. And since we have no control over that, we have no control over the decisions we make either. Our nature is simply programmed into us. If you've ever tried to meditate, you can see this because it's nearly impossible to stop thoughts from entering your mind. One after another, like clouds forming and passing in the sky above you, your mind creates thoughts. But where do these thoughts come from? If you are truly in control of your life, then why can't you simply stop these thoughts from entering your mind? Could it be that these thoughts arise from the same power that created us? If so, does that mean the thoughts we have are coming from a source other than ourselves? The surprising answer is yes. There is a whole branch of philosophy that believes none of us ever make a free will decision. Everything we think, do and say is being prompted from this unknown source. This is the source of all creation and what many would consider God. If this philosophy is true, then that means all of us have no real control over our individual nature and life. This philosophy says that people like Zen monks and ascetics who devoted countless hours to meditation and going within have ultimately realized there is no true self. By knowing this, they have surrendered themselves to the source and by doing so, their lives become easier and more fulfilling. Instead of fighting their nature, they live along with it, knowing they are just observers. That's why so many of them say, I am not this body, and whatever I do is just the divine operating through me. These monks and ascetics have realized there is no true self, and all thoughts and actions are being prompted by the divine source itself. While this philosophy may seem quite jarring and negative, nonetheless, there are people who believe it to be true. They claim if you surrender yourself to having no free will, then you will cease self-interference and eradicate suffering. Suffering comes because of the struggle for control, they say. If you realize you truly have no control and surrender that fight, life becomes totally different. Of course, this is a long conversation. But if this philosophy is correct, then it's kind of as Neil Donald Walsh said, every possible decision we can make is being played out. The exception is that we are really not choosing what decision to make. The divine is doing that for us while giving us the perception of free will. We are just observers going along for the ride. Much more can be said about this, but I will end on that note. I have given you now three different philosophical stances of free will and determinism. The one of Neil Donald Walsh, the one of Tom Campbell, which is the most liberal, and the one of absolute determinism, which I just mentioned. It's your choice to determine which one you believe, or is it? I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please like the video and sign up to my free email list to be alerted to my newest videos. Links are below. A big thank you to everyone who's supporting my work through your generous donations. And of course, thank you to all the patrons' support as well. If you wish to see exclusive content, early releases, and more, check out my Patreon page at the below link. Wishing you all peace, love, and great health. See you in tomorrow's video, and of course, a big namaste. Never ceasing, call for song.